lesson this is describing chemical reactions and correlates chapter 7.2 in your textbook. Your key concepts for this video are what information does a chemical equation contain, how is mass conserved during a chemical reaction, and what are the four types of chemical reactions. So let's talk about chemical equations. As you know from sixth grade, they show a chemical reaction using symbols. Here on the left side, you have the things that are reacting together. We call those our reactants. On the right side, where the arrow is pointing to, we have our products. This is our end result. And the arrow here, that stands for yields. So water plus carbon dioxide yields glucose and oxygen. This is your photosynthesis equation from seventh grade. Now we've also got two different types of numbers in our chemical equation. The large number in front of the molecule is called our coefficient, and it tells us our number of molecules. So there are six water molecules, six carbon dioxide molecules, one glucose molecule, it's not written there but it's implied, and six oxygen molecules. We've also got these little numbers down here. Those are our subscripts, sub meaning below, script meaning word. And that tells us the number of atoms in the molecule. So we've got two hydrogens for every one oxygen. We have one carbon dioxide for every two oxygens. We have six carbons here per with 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. And then here in the oxygen molecule, we have two oxygens per molecule. So that chemical reaction, how is that mass conserved within it? Now remember back to your law of conservation of mass. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. That's how we have photosynthesis and cellular respiration being able to be a cycle. So how do we model that? We model that through balancing equations. So this is a review also from sixth grade. Here we've got the equation for iron rusting. To figure out how many of each atom we have, we look at the coefficient of the subscript and we multiply them together. So for iron here, we have an invisible one and an invisible one, so we have one iron atom on this side. We have two oxygen atoms, because an invisible one times two. Here, we have an invisible one times our in two subscript, gives us two iron atoms on our product side. And oxygen, because this is a molecule, we look at the coefficient up here. We've got our invisible one times three, our subscript, to give us three oxygen. But if you look, the amount going in does not equal the amount going out. So we have to change this by changing our coefficients. You cannot change your subscript, but you can add molecules. So let's balance our oxygens first. If I were to put a two coefficient up here, then I would have two times three, which would give me six oxygen molecules. And then if I put a three over here, three times two would give me also six. So that would mean that now I have six oxygens on my reactant side and six oxygens on my product side. So my oxygens are happy. Now let's look at iron. I put this two coefficient here and it affects iron as well. So two times two now gives me four iron. So I've now got four irons going in. Last thing I've got to do is figure out what coefficient would let me have this balance. So four times one would make me have four irons, and then I would have a nice balanced chemical equation showing that law of conservation of mass. Now, let's talk about the four types of chemical reactions. The first type is synthesis. This is where two separate reactants will bond together to form one product. If you think about this like middle school dating, you've got two single people and then they become a couple and they're like, yay, happy, they've formed a compound. Our second type of reaction is the opposite of synthesis. It's called decomposition. It's when your reactants break apart into separate products. So when the couple breaks up and becomes single again, they have decomposed. Now, our fourth third and fourth type of reaction is called a displacement, sometimes risk replacement equation as well. So this is where reactants will trade places to form new products. So in a single displacement, you've got a compound and a single element, and then it switches to become a new compound and a single element. So here, with our dating analogy, say you've got two people dating, someone else comes along, and 
then he takes the place of the other one. So now this one's all sad and single, and these ones are a happy couple. And then our fourth type is our double displacement. This is where you've got two compounds, and they rearrange to form two new compounds. So you've got two different couples, they rearrange to form two new couples. That's it. Be sure your notes hit all the key concepts and vocabulary, and feel free to try this challenge question.